My son Stephen's um, he's, he's 22 now. Um, he's he's got severe autism um, and severe learning difficulties. He sort of functions at sort of five to six year old level, um, and um, he lives on on his own with me. Um, we live in a flat in in Uxbridge. Um, but then when he got to the hospital, he just got worse, and they didn't seem to be doing very much about it. We kept complaining. But they still did nothing. It was coughing up blood and they weren't even monitoring it. The care company, the agency that was providing care for me, had handed my package back to social services. Next thing, the following day, New Year's Eve, the social worker phoned me up first thing in the morning, um, said she wanted to come and see me. And she reported that the staff at the unit had had a difficult night with Stephen and she was proposing that they move Stephen to a, what's called a positive behaviour unit, um, not far from us. Um, and yeah, and her proposal was also that he stay there for a couple of weeks. It was always put, it was put to me, you know, give you a chance to recharge your batteries, Mark. I had been um, picked on and punched in the face. I was then forced to defend myself, which then led to um, the other student being injured. But instead of, um, the head teacher looking at both sides of the argument, it was biased towards me and I was kicked out of school. I go in, I just take him coffee, his newspaper and some yogurts and things like that for breakfast. And when I got in there, went in, he was in the side room, went in the room, he wasn't there. His coat was there, his phone was there, he wasn't there. So I thought, oh, maybe he's gone for some check. So I rushed out and said, where's, where's Alan, where is he? Don't know. I said, what do you mean don't? We don't know where he is. So I went back in. And I saw, I checked again, yes, everything was there. And I said, well, is he in the toilet? And I said, oh no, it's been gone a long time. I was really, really distressed because at that very kind of time, social services came out to me and they told me straight away that they were going to cut back my package. And so I said, look, the toilet's locked. And so I tried the door and shouted, banged on it, and there was no response. And I thought, well, that toilet's locked and someone in there, they're not responding. Obviously, it's so wrong. And for people with autism, where routine is so important, um, his his behaviour became very difficult very very quickly. And where we were getting sort of a handful of incidents at home, um, they were kind of beginning to log twenty odd incidents a week. Um, so very very quickly, within the space of a couple of weeks, the whole thing escalated to Hillingdon believing that Stephen's behaviour was too challenging for him to be at home and um, needed to stay there indefinitely. I saw him in the corner there, on the toilet, sideways, head back, with blood all over him. I mean, he was dead already. I mean, I, I didn't know at the time, I just, you know. I was desperate, really. Um, I couldn't believe how... Um, they'd always encouraged me to seek respite if I was unwell or if there was a problem at home. And the kind of first time that I'd... I'd asked for anything above the normal um, arrangement. I suddenly found myself in a situation where I wasn't getting him back. Um, it just felt terrifying. I was consistently not having my knees being met, having to fight, and it became really tiring, really exhausting. And it was only later on I found out he'd actually been in there for three hours, and no one had bothered to look in the toilet. And the toilet was right opposite where his room was where um, there were four action points in, 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 the, in the minutes of the meeting. One was that um, Stephen would not be allowed to come home permanently. Two, they would look for alternative places for him to live. Three, Mr Neary must not be told of these arrangements. And fourthly, um, to consider a deprivation of liberty authorisation. I came to a meeting in Stevenage, and at the Stevenage meeting, there was power. I mean, without the advocate, I couldn't have even, I couldn't have got anywhere with it. Power enabled me to be able to do something that I felt passionately about. Um, I'd made a complaint by this point about the lack of advo advocacy. Um, and then all of a sudden one day, I think Hillingdon must have contacted Power, um, because all of a sudden one day I got a phone call from an advocate called Scylla. Um, she arranged to come and see me who then put me forward to HEMA from power. And she then got me into secondary, uh, into the park, which is um, an education centre in Potter's Bar. Without her, I couldn't have done anything. I think power is for everybody. 
It's not just for people that's supposedly vulnerable. And uh, I then went on to pass all of my GCSEs. I um, went to college from there, which I then got um, the grades to get me into uni. That nobody should go through what I went through and have no voice. So, power to power. <laughs> And from then it moved really, really quickly. So I think it was about three weeks after I met Scylla um, that we actually got a solicitor. Um, and then three weeks after getting the solicitor, Stephen was home. Um, he was home almost a year to the day that he, um, he went away. So we went back to court in February and the judge decided it should be a permanent order. It was in Stephen's best interest to be at home. And now I'm in uni, currently studying international business with Mandarin. <laughs>